was arrested. I went around the country campaigning for our party, and I came into contact with ordinary people all over the place. And I knew that in any country, if the majority are determined to follow a certain path, they will be able to do it sooner or later. Of course, there was a lot of fear. If you've lived under dictatorship for many decades, then you get used to a state of fear. And getting over fear is not easy. But once they manage that first step, then I think they, ma they can go on. The nature of dictatorship or the nature of oppression, that in your opinion, like how, how does it work that a whole nation becomes submissive? to a dictator or to an oppressive regime and they and they just live with it they don't fight it for a long time how is this this national psyche working in I've your always opinion? found it very strange because my nature is such that I always question everything and I think basically one of the great problems in my country was that people stopped asking questions. When they were told to do something by somebody who seemed to be an authority, they would do it without asking why. Whereas I always wanted to know the question why. Why should I do it? For what purpose? And what right had they to ask me to do it? And these were the questions that I would ask almost um, naturally and automatically. After we founded the National League for Democracy, this was one of the things we had to try to teach the members of our party that they must ask questions. They must not take everything for granted and they must not obey somebody who is in authority simply because he or she is an authority. Does he or she have the right to give these orders? That is the first thing. And then are these orders correct? Are they justified? And so on and so on. And the lack of these questions, is it because of fear? What is the role of fear in in keeping in place a dictatorship? It's partly culture and it's partly fear because I think uh, it is part of Burmese culture not to question your elders, mm -hmm. those who are in authority. I think uh, this is what our children are taught from a young age. On one hand, I, I like politeness. I like the fact that younger people are polite to older people because as people get older, they grow weaker. And, and as younger people grow older, they grow stronger. And I, I always think that there is something particularly beautiful about the strong being tender with the weak and not taking advantage of the position. So it should work the other way around as well. But I'm afraid this goes on still quite a lot, not just in Burma, but I think in many other societies as well, that the strong, whether strong in years physically stronger, financially um, stronger, politically stronger, socially stronger, they do tend to want to dominate those who are weak. And then what makes a nation accept that other than culture? Fear, fear of course, is fundamental to many things that go wrong in our world. I've said very often that fear is the foundation of hatred. When people say they hate somebody, basically they fear that person. You, there is no need for you to hate somebody that you don't fear. You may dislike him or her. Well, that's perfectly all right. Uh, for example, we may, uh, we may dislike uh, sour fruits, but you won't say, people don't say, I I'm frightened of oranges. You know, you may just say, I don't like oranges. But people would say things like, I'm frightened, I'm, I hate snakes, which usually means they're frightened of snakes, or I hate insects which usually means they're frightened of insects. So I, did, I think hatred and fear are very, very closely linked. And if we want to eliminate fear, we have to try to get at the roots of hatred.